All right, so today we're gonna to be working on fixing up this QRS that a friend got from a scam shop that was trying to mimic a well-known armorsmith based in Ukraine called Ironwood Shop. The seller that my friend got this from is based in India, unfortunately, uh, and they were mimicking Ironwood Shop's design for series Witcher armor. Now, just from like a, like a distant look, it doesn't look all too bad until you try to align it. Then we start running into the issues already. Uh, just based on its size alone, it is far too large for my friend. Uh, and I mean, like, just just already you can tell that there's issues with this. But we're going to get into the specifics of both pieces and then we're going to fix it. All right, now let's inspect the back plate. All right, it has a superficial fake split down the middle just marked with a chisel. That's that's okay. Uh, so then we have top shoulder strap, top shoulder strap, side strap, and... No, no, no. Uh, oh, God, okay. Horrible bend. And the rivets. Yeah, that's gonna stab someone. And so now we have the front chest piece. Uh, so far it looks good, you know, you have the top strap, side strap, side strap, top. No, no, no. Uh, but overall, you know, it's, it's got decent shape to it, you know, like, uh, uh. Hmm. Uh, how do I explain? This itself is uneven. Like, that's not going to sit well. And then this... Don't even get me started on the fucking rivets. Like, those will stab someone. I already started, like, peening or flattening the rivets. That way they're more comfortable. So the rivets are at least easily fixable. The rest, though, I'm going to have to, like, bend by hand and using machines just to uh, fix it up. Taking this inside just for a brief second so that way I can properly show all the tools that I'll be using for this project. But so for peening the rivets, because that's what we're going to be starting off with, you're going to need an anvil. You're also going to need a hammer and obviously the armor itself. Now the anvil doesn't have to be like an actual legitimate anvil. I'm just going to be using this because it makes it the easiest, but you can literally just have like a super tiny anvil. And so long as you're able to sit the armor and the rivet specifically right on the anvil, you can then flatten it fairly efficiently and easily. The whole point is to have a surface area upon which you can hit the hammer onto the uh, rivet without damaging the surface underneath. And that's the whole point of an anvil. Now for types of anvils, you can do the other two that I just showed, or you can do like literally just a steel block. You can make your own anvil like I had with this welded piece, or you can just use a straight up rail railroad track. As for hammers, uh, the easiest one is obviously just a simple hammer but you can also use a cross beam hammer or a ball peen hammer or a blacksmithing hammer. I will be using this primarily because of the rounded uh, head that just allows for peening a rivet much more efficiently, but you can really use any kind of hammer. All right, another change of location just for now. So another issue I ran into is that the side plates that overlap the front plates for the back piece um, are a little too long. It should be fine, but my friend is a little bit more on the thin side. So this is something that needs to be trimmed. So I plan to trim right along here and also a little bit more on the other side. And the reason why a little bit more is gonna be chopped off here is because the belt buckles here, as well as here, are misaligned. But it's it's the positioning of them. It's ever so slightly off and it's messing with me heavily. Also, like, belt buckle hole there, belt buckle hole there. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. So we're gonna be 
chopping off just a section of this and we're going to do so with the guillotine right here. And we're going to try to do just past one rivet so that way we don't risk chopping off too much. All right, and just by chopping off these two pieces right here, uh, it's mostly solved itself now. Like it can be pulled in much closer while still having enough overlap that if there is a gap, it won't be that bad and it will properly fit my friend now. I also already took her measurements, so we're fine on that front. Now all I have to do is just replace the buckles. All right, we are back to refurbishing this piece of uh, knockoff armor that a friend got off of Etsy. And today we are accompanied by Becca. <laughs> All right, so Becca's a little cold right now. <laughs> okay, so cold's an understatement. Anyways, so as I was working on this piece, uh, there's like a belt buckle right here, but one of the belt buckles literally popped off as I grabbed it and was carrying it by the strap, which, you know, understandable, I was grabbing it by the strap, but also it shouldn't do that. So we're gonna be making some new straps and attaching them to replace the old straps just so that way it's nice and fresh and it won't do that again. <laughs> uh, so we have our rivets right here that we're gonna heat up and soften. And then we have our brass washers uh, to help protect the leather. Um, we got all of our, all of our tools and let's, let's get into it. All right, so we have our leather strip ready. It's very improvised, very simple, but it's durable, and that's what matters. So next, you're simply going to feed it through this belt buckle until it goes all the way through. And now we have the beginnings of a belt buckle. Now we just have to punch a hole through and rivet it. All right, so now we have our belt buckle with the hole punched. Now we just have to add in the rivet, like so. Add in the washer, like so. And now we just have to peen the rivet over. So that way it will sit more comfortably and not fall out. Here we go. All right, so we got that rivet down. So now the buckle is sealed in. So now we just have to get the second rivet to make sure that this strap is in the armor. Much better.
All right, so we're getting closer. We just finished the side buckle for this side. Unfortunately for the second side, I accidentally punched a hole in the wrong location. That is where the belt buckle goes over. So I'm going to quickly go over how I made this one. This right here is just so that way the belt like itself doesn't like slip out of here. Like it's just a little securement, but it's really improvised. Like it's just being held by a shoddy rivet. Uh, it's literally just meant to like hold it in place. If uh, my friend doesn't enjoy it too much, I can easily replace it, but it's just for now. So that way I can have this piece stick together. But currently, just like my life, um, currently it is actually starting to come together a little bit. I have to fix a little bit of a bend, but otherwise, it is starting to look more proper. So a little snag. Uh, so we only have two brass rivets left. So we're going to save those for the top back shoulders just to keep aesthetics clean since the sides are usually less likely to be caught on camera or anything. And instead we're going to be replacing the washers with these improvised leather washers. It's literally just like this. It's meant to protect the leather strap from hammering the rivet in, as well as preventing the rivet from shearing and tearing away. I have two on the top and then one on the bottom, like in between the armor and the le leather strap, just to help protect the strap as best as I can. And that way I don't have to worry about using up all the washers and having to buy more. And these usually work pretty well. And since this is a spot that won't be on camera, if in a cosplay or a photo shoot or a video, it's less likely to really matter, especially because there's less strain on the sides compared to the shoulders. The thing I will be doing that you saw earlier is I will be doubling up the section that is riveted to the armor uh, just by having it fold over itself with a pull punch through. This is allowing the uh, belt to have a little extra strength without having to rely on washers or the improvised leather bits but yeah so we're just going all in hammering this was a little more intensive than i was expecting so i couldn't record any of it but we got the we got the rivet pinned and so now we just have to punch the holes in and make sure that it fits